Prime Minister ready to be probed, removed if wrongdoing proven. Study on gadget devices in schools. Good evening, I'm Jessica Lee. Welcome to News on 2. The people have the right to make reports if they have proof of leaders who have committed crimes or otherwise. Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamad said he was willing to be probed or removed if he has been proven guilty of making mistakes while governing the country. Dun Dr. Mother explained that all the current government leaders have taken an oath of maintaining integrity while carrying out their duties in office. Wakil -wakil rakyat kita. Kalau terlibat dengan rasuah, terima duit daripada orang itu, orang ini supaya nak bagi kontrak dan sebagainya, mereka juga akan disingkir daripada jawatan mereka, bahkan mungkin disingkir dari menjadi ahli parti Pakatan Harapan. Speaking in Langkawi today, Tun Dr. Mahathir also thanked the people of Langkawi for electing him as their member of parliament, thereby paving the way for him to become the prime minister. The Pakatan Harapan government will offer services that can provide more employment and business opportunities for the people so as to raise their incomes and standard of living. Now, this will be a very different approach as compared to the previous Barisan National Government, which had the tendency to give money to people in exchange for their support. Prime Minister Tunok Tamade Mohamad said Pakatan Harapan's victory in Langkawi had proven that the people of Langkawi were not easily swayed by the corrupt bribery tactics of Barisan Nasional during the recent May 9th election. Dan bantuan kami bukanlah dengan bentuk duit yang dicuri. Kali ini kami bukan pencuri. Kami bukan kleptokrat. Kami hanya mewakili rakyat dan akan bertindak menolong rakyat mengikut undang-undang negara kita. Kita akan patuh kepada undang-undang dan tidak melakukan sesuatu yang bercanggah dengan undang-undang semata-mata kerana ingin mendapat sokongan daripada rakyat. Dr. Made, who is also Langkawi's Member of Parliament, said this during a speech today at the Ideal Fitri Open House of the Langkawi Parliamentary Constituency at the Lada Sports Complex Hall. Now, the event welcomed over 10,000 local and foreign attendees. A government-linked company, GLC Chief Executive Officer, held for investigation into alleged power abuse, which involved several construction projects worth 300 million ringgit, was released by the Magistrates' Court today. Magistrate Mohammad Abdul Mohammad Hafiz ordered the man, aged 59, to be released on bail of 50,000 ringgit in one surety after the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, or MACC, made no remand extension request. The man who has the Datuk title had been on a three-day remand since last Thursday for investigation under Section 17A of the MACC Act 2009. The suspect was arrested by the MACC last Wednesday afternoon after raids were conducted at several premises in the Klang Valley, including the accused house and office to obtain documents related to the case. He is believed to have abused his power to manipulate the process of several construction projects that are currently being carried out by the GLC. According to MACC spokesperson, the project was awarded to a company through a tender process, but the suspect intentionally placed many hurdles, which led to the designated party failing in its endeavours to implement the project. Following which, the project was later given to a replacement contractor who is believed to have links to the suspect and is understood that the whole thing had already been pre-planned earlier. Communications and Multimedia Minister Gobin Singh Dio has ordered a full investigation of a project implemented by the Malaysian Digital Economy Corporation, or MDEC, also known as ADEX. Now, according to Gobin, MDEC has requested the National Audit Department to carry out an audit on the project. 
In a statement, Gobin stressed that the ministry had received many questions regarding the project, which aims to develop the ecosystem and create a talent pool crucial in the analytical data category. The investigation will be centred around the questions raised while also relating to whether or not a conflict of interest actually exists between programme managers and training providers. Moreover, Gobin said that the Ministry will receive a full report on the project in the near future. A lorry driver was killed while a trailer driver escaped unhurt after their vehicle collided with each other at kilometre 35 heading south in Kulai, Johor, early this morning. The victim, identified as Azlan Shamsuddin, 46, died on the spot after the lorry he was driving crashed at the back of a trailer carrying bricks. Kulai Fire and Rescue Department Head of Operations Masnawi Warshdin said a motorcycle was also involved in the accident, but the rider escaped with minor injuries. He also said that it took almost 25 minutes for the fire and rescue team to bring out the victim's body from the crashed vehicle. The trailer driver, however, did not suffer any injuries. The body of the victim and the injured motorcyclists were brought to Hospital Temenggung Sri Maharaja Tun Ibrahim in Kulai for post-mortem and treatment respectively. The case is being investigated under Section 41, Subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987. All three departure lanes at the causeway leading to Johor Bahru have reopened after they were closed due to a traffic accident earlier this morning. Singapore's Immigration and Checkpoints Authority, ICA, said in their Facebook account posting that the operations at the Woodlands Checkpoint have resumed as usual. Channel News Asia earlier reported that at least one person died and four others were injured in the accident. The Singapore Civil Defence Force, or SCDF, had received a call for ambulances around 1 a.m. following the accident and three ambulances and one fire truck were dispatched to the scene. One man was pronounced dead at the scene while the three injured people were sent to the Kul Teg Puat Hospital in Singapore. A fourth person who sustained injuries, however, declined to be taken to a hospital. Meanwhile, Joe Baru Selatan District Police Chief ACP Sharunayan Jais confirmed the accident but noted that they do not have any other information when asked whether any Malaysians were involved in the accident. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail attended an ideal fitri and appreciation event today for Kanga Parliamentary Constituency at Dataran Dato' Sheikh Ahmad. Now speaking during a brief address at the event, she expressed her gratitude for Pakatan Harapan's victory in the last general election, which led to the formation of the new federal government. Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza, who is also the Women, Family and Community Development Minister, advised all Pakatan Harapan leaders to always put the people's welfare first. The Ideal Fitri event saw 7,000 visitors, which started pouring in at about 11 a.m. Meanwhile, Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza said that her husband, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, is on the road to recovery. Datuk Sri Anwar was rushed to University Maya Medical Center in Kuala Lumpur on June 23rd after he suffered pain in his right shoulder and back upon his return from a visit to Turkey. The Education Ministry is in the midst of reviewing plans to facilitate the move by schools to allow students to use their personal electronic devices in the classroom for the purpose of learning and doing schoolwork. Now, its minister, Dr. Mazli Malik, today said the ministry was investigating the need for students to bring electronic devices to school, adding that several criteria needed to be highlighted, such as safety and facility, before a decision could be made. Itu masih dalam kajian kerana kita akan lihat kepada isu-isu keselamatan yang pertamanya dan isu prasarana yang cukup sebab kita tak mahu mereka ada gadget tetapi softwarenya tidak lengkap. Jadi apa-apa kita nak buat, dia perlu bersikap holistik dan perlu berdasarkan kepada apa ni kelinciran perjalanan itu secara apa tu komprehensif. It was reported that former Education Minister Datuk Sri Mazi Khalid said students in the country's 10,000 schools would be allowed to bring certain mobile devices to class as it will help schools encourage teaching and learning via electronic gadgets. Dr. Masli also said he was open to any party who was willing to help in uplifting the nation's education standards. 
Malaysia will improve its anti-human smuggling efforts after the U.S. government downgraded the country's ranking in its latest annual report. Home Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin today said that looking at the situation, the ministry will carry out some drastic measures to curb the situation. In a statement released today, he said among them are increasing the prevention efforts of human trafficking through close collaboration with NGOs, the industry, as well as intensifying inter-agency action. The management of foreign workers will also be holistically reviewed to ensure that the welfare and rights of foreign workers are protected. Malaysia had previously been at Tier 2 of observation 19 times between 2006 to 2018. Dastri Mohidin also informed that the U.S. government assessment would be used as a guide in improving the nation's initiative in combating human trafficking crime. Malaysian-based investment holding company Dagang Next Change Berhad or DNEX has signed a memorandum of agreement, MOA, with the local government and education department of Naga City, Philippines, to develop a halal-based hub in the country. Now, the agreement would allow DNEX to provide various assistance to the country in terms of research and development, product certification and services provided by the hub. Commenting further on the plan, DNEX Deputy Chief Executive Officer Datuk Samsul Hussein said the company will develop a blueprint by the end of the year to optimize the halal food and tourism industry in the Philippines. Especially like tourism, for them to invite tourists, Muslim tourists, tourists coming to Naga City, they need halal restaurant, they need uh, malls, let's say, they need a uh, place. Uh, all the place relating to uh, food, halal food, and all these things. So we are going to advise them what 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 need to do. Then there is going to be a council set up that to monitor. And Meanwhile, Naga City Education Department Schools Division Superintendent Dr. William Gando said the cooperation with DNEX is important towards understanding the implementation of the halal topic in school curriculum. We don't get a good share of our Muslim tourists, basically because we don't have the existing halal restaurants and uh, other facilities. So hopefully with this, we can, have, we can capture this market, which will in the end help the economy, the local economy of Naga City grow. Both Datuk Samsul and Dr. Gando met after signing the memorandum at the federal capital today. And that concludes this evening's edition of News on 2. In our top story, Prime Minister ready to be probe, remove, if wrongdoing proven. Now for World Cup fans, catch the France versus Argentina round of 16 match on TV1 at 10.30pm tonight. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Jessica Lee. Thank you for watching.